brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the Methodist Voices in Word and Song television ministry. As we worship God today, let us listen to the Saxtorp choristers as they bring us the introit. Oh, call to worship. In a transforming world, we gather to, to give praises to our God who calls us to do his will. May this worship be a time to affirm that life is a gift, that the gift is good, and that it comes from God. In a transforming world, we hear God calling us anew to follow Jesus with purpose and passion. May this worship challenge us to open our ears, hearts, and lives to the spirit of life, which makes all things new. As we continue to worship, let us sing our opening hymn, Jesus, the name high over all, the hymn 49 in the VIP.
we continue with our prayers of adoration. Let us go to God in prayer. Omnipotent Redeemer, mighty God, we worship and adore you. Lord, you have been so good to us. You have blessed us tremendously. And so, O oh God, we meet in your house, O oh God, to worship and adore your most matchless name. Mighty King, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, O oh God. And as we come, dear God, we lift you up and we give you all the praises you so deserve. Lord, as we come, O oh God, we come with hearts, O oh God, grateful to be in your presence once more. And so, O oh God, as we worship you, God, we pray, dear Lord, that our, as our praises go up, O oh God, the blessings would come down. We give you thanks for this very moment, dear God, wherever we are in the world, O oh God, giving you our praise. We ask, dear God, that you acknowledge, O oh God, whatever we do here today, and that it be a blessing to all. In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. O choir will sing, change my heart, O God. We continue with our prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Creator, Creator God, God, we confess before you that we do not always follow the ways of the world you created, but instead follow the ways of the world we have created, a world in which we put ourselves above others, that our needs and desires are more important than anyone else's. We put worldly success, fame, and satisfaction above the needs of others, especially the people we do not see. Forgive us, O Lord, and may you call us back into the love of others and to love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, who leads us into, into new, new life, life we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Hear the assurance of pardon. Liberating God, we are your beloved children. We know that you have heard our cry for forgiveness and have given us your grace and pardon through your son, Jesus Christ. Hear then the good news, my brothers and sisters, your sins have been forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. We continue with our prayer of thanksgiving. O divine gift giver, with hearts of gratitude, we stand beneath the endless waterfall of your abundant gifts to humankind. We thank you especially for the blessings of life the most precious of all your gifts to us. 
We thank you, ever generous one, for your provisions of clothing to wear, food and drink to nourish our bodies, and a roof over our head. We thank you for the many joys of life, for family and friends, for work that gives to us a sense of purpose and invests our lives with meaning. Giver of all good gifts, we thank you for all the talents and skills that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you as well for the suffering and trials of our lives. Grant that we may never greet a new day without the awareness of some gift for which to give you thanks. And may constant thanksgiving be our song of perpetual praise to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue our worship as we sing the hymn 236 in the VIP, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. At this time, we join our hearts in our praise and worship to be led by Sister Joel Alfred and Leslie Ann Baker.
got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. continue with the ministry to the children, youth, and young adults. The story is told of a king who had four wives. The fourth one he adored the most and would give the best to the best dress, the finest jewelry, cars, you name it. The third one he also loved but that's the one that he would show off to the neighbors, to his kingdom. The second wife was the one, she was the kind one. So whenever he had a decision to make, he would turn to her and she would help him to make the best decision. The first wife, she was the one responsible for ensuring, you know, that he was fed he had clothes to wear, and she would basically take care of the things in the home. But that's the one that he paid little attention to. The time came when he got very sick. And he thought to himself, I am going to die, and I don't want to do this alone. Because remember, he was the king, and he was, you know, always in company of other people. So he called the fourth wife and he said, my dear, I am dying and I would like you to accompany me into the afterlife. She bluntly said to him, no, how can I leave and give up all these dresses and cars that you would have given to me? He was disappointed. The third wife basically said the same thing, except she said, Life is good. I can remarry. So I can't go with you. The second wife said to him, this is a decision I can't help you with. You have to go alone. With all, of that, that, with all that was happening, he heard a voice that said, I will go with you. And that was his first wife. He looked at her and he felt ashamed because this is the one that he paid little and no attention to. So she looked kind of haggard and, you know, she was not well dressed and she looked sick and all of that. So my boys and girls, the fourth wife represents our body. 
This is the body that we would dress up. We adorn in fine clothes and, you know, we show ourselves to our friends. But when we die, we have to leave that body behind. The third wife is our possessions, all the things that we own in this life. When we die, don't we have to leave those behind as well? The second wife is like our families and friends. The furthest they can go with us is to the cemetery, and that's it. But the first wife represents our soul, and this is the one that the king paid little attention to. And sometimes as children of God, we also pay little attention to our souls. We fail to feed our souls with the word of God. We fail to pray. We fail to nourish our bodies. We fail to live a healthy life. So I want to encourage us today to feed our souls. We feed our souls with the word of God. We pray to him. We ask him to enter into our lives. Because at the end of the day, this is the only thing that we have when we die, our souls. And if our souls are not right with God, we are surely bound for hell. So I encourage us to pay attention to our souls so that at the end of it all, we will live eternally with God. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, we bless your name and we give you thanks for the moments spent with our children. We ask you, dear God, to cover them even now under your blood. And as we continue on this journey, dear God, we pray that they would make the wisest decision, dear God, to feed their souls, nourish their souls with your word, dear God, so that at the end of it, they would live eternally with you. We ask that you bless the homes, the communities from which they have come, as we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We join with our children as we sing Jesus, friend of little children, 472 in the VIP. We pay attention now to the ministry of the word. We all pray the collect together. Eternal Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you reveal him to be your son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful to their calling as your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes to us from Genesis chapter 1, reading from verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, 
The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our responsive psalm, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl. The strips and strips the forest bear, and his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. We all join in the Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We continue with our epistle, which comes to us from Acts 19, 1 to 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior region and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who is to come after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hand on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading will be read to us by Reverend Kurt Baker. The gospel according to Mark chapter 1, reading from verses 4 to 11. Glory to you, O God. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judea countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camels here with leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the tongue of his sanders. I have baptized you with water, 
but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of Christ. Honor it by saying, Praise be to Christ our Lord. We continue as we sing our hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, 159. We listen now to the word of God from Reverend Baker. Let us go to God in prayer. Creator God, we honor you and we magnify your risen name. Even on this day, O oh God, as we listen to your spoken word, we pray that your word may go forth with clarity and understanding. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I speak to you on the topic, Who are we in Christ? As we reflect on the text that was read to us from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved with you, I am well pleased. As we journey into 2021, can we boldly declare 
who we are in Christ. Can we identify ourselves with Jesus? Are we empowered by the Holy Spirit to do his work and to liberate our brothers and sisters? Do we have the assurance that our Heavenly Father loved us and is willing to take us safely through this year? So my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us therefore examine the text. Mark 1 verses 9 to 11, which speaks about the baptism of Jesus the Christ by John the Baptist. And see if we can answer these questions posed to us from the text. First, Mark looks at the baptism of Jesus as an act of his identification in God. Christian friends, Jesus took our place, but this began at his baptism, not the cross. This was the first step leading to that relationship in which he was ultimately to be made sin for us. That is actually becoming what we are. This was the first sign of his intention to do so. When he took the place of a sinner and was baptized with a baptism of repentance and confession of sin. This is what his baptism, my dear brothers and sisters, signifies. And it's why Jesus said to John the Baptist, thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. He declared his intention to meet the religious demands of God by himself undertaking to pay the debts of men. So Jesus' baptism was clearly an act of identification, my brothers and sisters. Hence, we too must take on that identification as children of God in our lives when we give of ourselves fully to do the will of God. Friends, when we say that bold step to give ourselves fully to the master, our identity will be revealed. We are no longer the same. Our whole being is changed. And as such, our actions, the way we live and speak, our general conduct must be a reflection of Christ. The word of God says, by their fruit, you shall know them. Our covenant pledge sums it up for us when it comes to our identity in Christ. Last week, we declared in our pledge, I am no longer my own. I belong to you. Make me know what you would have me to do. Associate me with whomsoever you please. Let me be of service to others. Let others be of service to me. Let me be employed for you or stand aside for you. Fill me or empty me, enrich me or impoverish me. Exalt me or humble me. Our identity as children of God is very important. And that is why we must stand out among our brothers and our sisters. Secondly, the baptism of Jesus was God's empowering moment. The text outlined to us when he came up out of the water. Immediately he saw the heavens opened and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. Immediately. My dear brothers and sisters, is a word used frequently in the Gospel of Mark. He uses it again and again 
and all through the account in the text. It is very significant that the moment Jesus took, take our place, the Father gives him the gift of the Holy Spirit. There's no greater need that we have as individuals than to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is by the Holy Spirit that man is able to live as he wants to live and, and longs to live and is able to overcome the power of sin and guilt and fear within us. Thus, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus took our place, the power of God was immediately given to him by the gift of the Holy Spirit. This picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ receiving the Holy Spirit shows that he was getting ready for the ministry that he will launch out into. We are told in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Our answer my dear brothers and sisters, it's when we say, yes, Lord, yes to your will. Yes, use me. Yes, empower me through the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Give me the utterance to do your will. It is Paul who tells us to one is given through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, to the another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. When we are empowered by the Spirit of God, we move mountains. And so, Jesus' baptism is one that really and truly empower him through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Not only his identification was revealed, not only he was empowered, but we are also told that through his baptism, he received the assurance from God. Which is the third point I leave with us today. There came a voice from heaven. Thou art my beloved son. With thee I am well pleased. In Matthew Gospel, it is stated a little differently. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. Luke and Mark puts it this way. Thou art my beloved son. He gave us the assurance that Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the one whom God sent on earth to redeem us and to set us free. Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, was told he is God's beloved son. We are all God's children. We are all God's beloved children. We belong to God. And because we belong to God, God will always be there for us. It is said to us that if we do not know who we are, we have a little self-confidence. We have to know who we are before we can have security in our speech and our action. Friends, our lives, our attitude is very important as we go forth doing the will of God. And today, as we look at the baptism of Jesus the Christ, where Christ's identity it was revealed to us, where Christ, he was empowered through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that where Christ was given that beloved name, that he is God's son. Today we are called upon to surrender our all to God.
we are called upon to go to the highways and the byways to do the will of God through this year. We don't know what it holds for us, but we know with God all things are possible. So who are we? Or who are you in Christ? And our answer should be as 1 Peter 2, 9 declares, but we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. May we go forth, knowing that the God who is here with us will be with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand as we affirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our renewal of fellowship where we have our welcome, greetings, and announcements. We thank you, our worshipers, for making your local financial support to the ministries of the local churches. As a church community, we are involved in sharing care packages to homebound members and community residents and other care programs to the church do continue your good work. Please contact your class leaders and local church office for opening hours and banking information to make your weekly tithes and offering. Our annual district conference will meet from January 21 to January 28, 2021. Ministerial session, January 21, 22, and 28. These sessions are blended. The representative session, January 25 to 27, and this has been done virtually. Conference Lord's Day will be on January the 24th. Local morning service will be held in congregations with a common order throughout the district. The official conference service will be held January 24 at 4 p.m. as a blended session for select delegates and guests at the Saxtorb Methodist and on the virtual platform through Zoom and YouTube. The district theme, spreading scriptural holiness to reform the nation, beginning with me. The sub theme, Caring for the body and soul as we serve the present age. Our theme song, A Charge to Keep I Have, VIP 314A. Make God Your Choice, VIP 224. Each Friday before conference, we invite all to join us on Zoom for prayer meeting in preparation for the conference. Please check with your circuit office for the link or with the Jamaica District website at www.jamaicamethodist.org for further information. We invite your support for this ministry on television. To make your contributions, please call 876-925-6768 or 876-924-6768. 1218 or make a deposit as displayed on your screen. Let us now give God thanks. Let us pray. All good gifts around us are sent from above 
and we thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Father, we give you thanks for these, your gifts. We thank you, dear God, for the ability to work and to bring back a portion to your storehouse. We ask you, dear God, to bless those who are able to give, even those who are unable to give. We give you thanks for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. God of beginnings, at the dawn of the new year, we bring the year 2021 before you. 2020 was no easy journey, but we pray that in 2021, your presence, power, and purpose will reign supreme. We, your people, trust in you for guidance as we continue on this journey. God of healing, we bring before you the hurts and injuries of the past year. We rest them at your feet, Lord, as we prepare to go unburdened into the future. We pray for those who have hurt us in one way or another. We pray also for those whom we have hurt through our thoughtless words and actions. May love bring healing to broken relationships and families. God of wisdom, we bring the leaders of our nation before you. May they seek your guidance like the wise men and allow you to direct them as they make the decisions that determine our fate. We pray for the leaders of the church. May they be obedient to your word and lead the church according to your will, especially as we meet for our district conference 2021. Give us the knowledge and wisdom to do your will. Help us to hold our leaders accountable and support them as they seek to lead us aright. God of family, you bless your people with children and young people to renew the world. We pray for those who have been denied the opportunities and resources that they needed in 2020. We pray that 2021 will be a year of overflowing bounty. We pray for teachers and all others who lead and work with children and youth that they will be blessed. May we provide the example of good living that will direct our children and youth in the best way and provide for their needs. God of mercy, we bring before you those that are in mourning, sick, shut in, lonely, or in any kind of, or in need of any kind. 2020 was a year that exposed many of our flaws and exposed many to a lack that they had never experienced before. For those who have lost jobs, family, friends, shelter, or financial security, we pray that you will return to them even greater than that which they have lost. Like Job, may they bless your name even in the midst of their circumstances and receive twice times what they lost when you delivered them from their troubles. We pray these in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we want to thank you for worshiping with us today. Join us now as we sing our closing hymn, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, 307 in the VIP.
Reverend Baker will now lead us in the benediction. Friends, as we go forth, knowing that our Lord is with us, we are God's beloved. We go out into God's future to love, to serve, and to be made new. As we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit keep us now and forever. Amen. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Amen.